Do you like video editing? Oh yeah? Well, look what I got here for you. This is the Blackmagic Design Editor Keyboard and it is made exclusively for DaVinci Resolve. Join me in discovering everything this keyboard has to offer for us picture pranksters. As the name of this keyboard implies, it is meant to be used in the cut and edit pages. You can type with the QWERTY section of this keyboard on all the pages of Resolve and even outside Resolve. But the idea of this keyboard is to offer dedicated keys to some of the most essential commands available in the cut and edit pages. Having dedicated keys means that more commands are done with a single keystroke instead of using key combinations, which take more time. As these commands are used hundreds of times per session by the heavy users of Resolve, they will edit with more ease and speed. All it needs is one USB-C connection and you're ready to edit. No installs or any other setup procedures are required. The initial idea behind the editor keyboard, according to Grant Petty, the founder of Blackmagic Design, was the fact that editors had gotten used to using mouse as their primary editing tool. But it has one disadvantage. You can only use it with one hand. The editor keyboard with its jog wheel enables the editor to work efficiently with both hands. Let's start the dive with a general overview of the keyboard's layout. This left section as well as this right section here are both covered in the speed editor video I made previously. So go check that out for these keys and their functions. This top row of keys are the function keys, which are mapped so that their basic functions are some of the most commonly used editing commands in Resolve. These are the media pool sort keys, with which you can sort the material in bins according to the key's values, based on timecode, camera number, creation date and time, and based on alphabetical order. Pressing these keys again will toggle between ascending and descending order. As you use the source tape in the cut page, the order of the clips in the source tape view can conveniently be resorted at any moment by using these keys, helping you to browse and pick material for your rough cut. The timecode entry keys here allow you to input timecode or frame values directly to timeline for speedy and specific navigation and moving forward or backward in the timeline by specific numeral increments. This is the QWERTY section of the keyboard. The keyboard functions also as a standard computer keyboard. The QWERTY section can be divided into numbers, letters, symbols and modifier keys. These modifier keys do nothing by themselves but they do multiply the amount of functions of the keyboard by changing the functions of the other keys. These keys here are for navigating through the media. Home, arrows, JKL, space. Also the search wheel belongs in this navigation section. Here we can see the keys that work only in the cut page. The number of keys that are cut page only have thankfully been on decline with updates enabling cut-only keys to work on the edit page as well. Here are the keys that can also be found from the speed editor. There are quite a lot of these keys, which means that the keyboards are not necessarily meant to work together, although it is possible. I use both the speed editor and the editor keyboard, and I have a regular keyboard connected as well. Here are the keys that have direct resolve commands, which are not similarly directly available on a regular keyboard. This is one of the main selling points of this editor keyboard, at least in my opinion. No matter how many keyboards you have connected to a Windows PC, Windows will consider them as one. That said, the editor keyboard's commands are not all identical to a regular keyboard's commands. 
The editor keyboard uses an American keyboard layout, which means that some keys have different values from each other, if American keyboard layout is not your default keyboard layout. If you don't have the American keyboard layout installed in your system, you need to install it, and there's a handy shortcut for changing the keyboard layout. It's Windows key plus spacebar, which enables you to change the layout whenever you start to use the editor keyboard, enabling its keys to work as intended in Resolve. I, for example, need my Finnish keyboard layout for writing outside Resolve, and whenever I use Resolve, I just switch the layout to American. No problem. Let's begin the key-by-key key rundown with the first key in the top middle row, the escape key, which works as in a regular keyboard as an all-purpose reverse a function key. Use it whenever you need to stop, deselect, exit, reverse, return, clear and close something in Resolve. Currently a double press of the escape key performs an undo, just like it does in the speed editor. This function may or may not change with some future update to Resolve. Then we have the F1 sync bin key, which opens the sync bin view in the source window of the cut and edit pages. This function is meant for browsing and editing multicam clips. If you add clips in the bin that share time code, those clips will be automatically synced. You can also add clips that you have manually synced using the audio waveforms. All the available synced clips play together in the source window, from the point of the playhead, showing all the available tracks that you can then cut into. If available, time code is the best way to sync your material. But the sync by audio is also a good option available, though it's not as reliable as using timecode is. This key is also available in the speed editor. Next up is the F2 insert black key, which adds a two second clip of pure black via the solid color generator to the timeline's active video track on the point of playhead. This solid color clip gives the editor a controllable surface to the timeline, instead of less controllable empty space. You can use the clip as a controllable background for graphics, or for transitions where you want to replace the empty space in your timeline with an actual media clip. You can also use this solid color clip for adding black bars or pillars for material with different aspect ratio on your timeline. One idea is to create 5 second solid color clips, perhaps with different colors, for the editor as a kind of help track to better visualize the length of the materials on the timeline. If that happens to be important, like in doing some short commercial jingle work with multiple versions in the same timeline. F3 freeze key suspends a single frame on the playhead in your timeline for the remaining duration of that clip. The way the freeze function works is actually quite smart. The frame on the playhead is automatically assigned as the frame you want the freeze to begin from, and you don't need to specify the length for the duration of the freeze frame, as you can trim and stretch the duration of the frozen area of the clip as needed in the timeline. Freeze frame is handy when you need to highlight a point by pausing the image for a voiceover or text, most often when doing tutorials. Press and hold the F4 trans key in the cut page to open a transition menu window. The available transitions are in alphabetical order and there is an icon with visual description on each transition's shape. Rotating the search dial left and right will navigate you through the list. When you find the transition that you want, simply release the key and it will be placed at the timeline edit point, as shown by the smart indicator. This key works only in the cut page and is available also in the speed editor with an additional double press functionality. Press and hold the F5 pick in pick 
in the cut page to open up a menu window from which you can choose using the dial or numeric keyboard four options to place the image your playhead is currently on top right bottom right top left and bottom left the media from the timeline or from the source window will be placed on top of existing media in the timeline and scaled down to one eighth of the original size picture in picture can be used in interviews with multiple members or in tutorial videos where we want to see the presenter in a smaller window presenting us something full screen or if we want to show multiple angles or versions of the same event at the same time. Press and hold the F6 swap key to activate the clip under the playhead and move it earlier or later in the timeline with the search dial. Swapping the moving clip with the one you are scrolling over. Place the clip by releasing the key. You can also select and move multiple clips back and forth in your timeline all at once. This becomes handy if you don't want to change anything in your timeline and you just want to switch the order of the clips. This key works both in the cut and edit pages. Press F7 video only to activate or deactivate the video only button in the cut pages source window. When activated only the video from the source clip will be placed in the timeline. This is handy in multicam editing as you use multiple video tracks but use audio from only one source for your, let's say, music video. This key works only in the cut page and is also available in the speed editor. You can activate any of your timeline's video tracks to bring your source clip there. Press F8 audio only to activate or deactivate the audio only button in the cut pages source window. When activated, only the audio from the source clip will be placed in the timeline. This becomes handy in projects where you have finished video tracks, but you want to build the audio tracks from multiple sources. For example, when you need to do the same video with different language tracks. This key works only in the cut page and is also available in the speed editor. Keep in mind that the audio will be brought to the timeline into the track you have active. Press F9 insert in the edit page to split whatever media is already in the timeline at the position of the playhead and push that media to the right to make room for the incoming clip. In cut page the source clip is inserted into the nearest edit point marked by the smart indicator. When you insert a clip into an edit point which has a transition. In the cut page this transition remains, but in the edit page the same command removes the existing transition. This key is also available in the speed editor as smart insert. The addition of smart refers to the cut page's behavior on inserting the clip to the nearest edit point instead of simply adding it exactly where the playhead is. Press F10 to overwrite with the incoming clip in the source window to the timeline. This means that the clips in the timeline will be overwritten, not moved from the way of the incoming clip. This is handy when you don't want to change the timeline's existing structure or duration. If there are no in and out points marked in the timeline, the incoming clip aligns with the position of the playhead. A thing to keep in mind on the logic of Resolve is that when you activate a track from the timeline, the track name changes to A1, which might seem a bit confusing. This is because the track is now referring to the source clip's track 1. If your source clip has, let's say, 5 audio tracks, you can set 5 destination tracks to the timeline, and those tracks refer to the number of tracks available in the clip in the source window. Press F11 if you want to replace a clip in the timeline while preserving the attributes of the replaced clip. For example, if you want to test another music track in your timeline and still keep the effects work and keyframes from the original clip. Or if you have done lots of grading to a clip and you want to try some other clip in its place while using the original clip's grading work and other modified attributes. 
Replace edit doesn't require in and out points, as it aligns the frame at the playhead in the source window with the frame of the playhead in the timeline, and inserts the clip accordingly. It is often a good idea to activate a clip in the timeline and thereby assign the in and out points to the timeline for the incoming clip. Keep in mind that the replace command will happen to the tracks you have active in the timeline, if there are no activated clips. Also, if you have a clip with both video and audio, but you want to bring only the audio from the clip to the timeline, simply tick the video track inactive in the timeline. While holding the control key down, activate a clip in your timeline and mouse drag it on top of another clip in the timeline to perform a replace edit. This means that the new clip inherits the attributes of the clip that is being replaced. F12 Fit to Fill edits are the only edit type that actually use all four edit points. And it's the only edit type that retimes clips at the same time as they are being edited. By setting in and out points in the incoming source clip and another pair of in and out points in the timeline, you can stretch or compress the timing of the specified range of source media to cover the entire specified range of the timeline. In the process, the speed ratio of the clip changes, so the clip plays in either fast or slow motion. Fit to fill edits are especially valuable when you have a source clip in which the action is slightly slow, and you just want to speed it up by squeezing it into a shorter duration of the timeline. They're also handy in situations when you have a gap in an edited sequence of clips to fill with a source clip that's just not long enough, but in which slightly slower motion won't be noticeable. Fit to fill edits do not ripple the timeline. To do the same as F11 replace, with the exception that whereas fit to fill replaces the clip in the sequence starting from the playhead to the end of the clip, replace edit replaces the entire clip in the timeline with the chosen clip in the source window. The ripple delete is quite handy as it groups together two operations. It deletes the activated clip from the timeline and closes up the remaining gap by rippling the timeline to the left. You can also mark an in and out area in the timeline or choose multiple clips to ripple delete them. If there are no in and out points marked and no clips are activated in the timeline, the clip starting from the playhead will be deleted and the remaining gap will also be removed. This key is also available in the speed editor. The FN key alters the function keys of the editor keyboard to behave as they would on a regular keyboard. I will now display the functions only briefly, as they only make sense if the editor keyboard would be your only keyboard connected to your system. It makes much more sense to keep a regular keyboard connected and use its function keys with more ease.